Hello everybody. So today I wanted to talk about uh, the, the current situation with uh, Russia launching a um, <clears throat> missile into Dnipro in Ukraine and have what I think is likely to happen for the rest of the war and moving forward. So obviously this war focuses around US politics and it's not just that Trump said it was going to end it, but <clears throat> obviously Ukraine are getting funding from USA. I believe it's 90% of the funding that they have been getting it from external sources. And it it, it boosts their military um, equipment by about 10 times, maybe 20. I'm not sure of the exact numbers, but certainly we know that in 2014, they lasted about four days against Russia. And in this war, even though they had the supplies between 2014 and 2022, which was a lot of supplies, um, that was probably enough to get them to last up to about a month, maybe six weeks, two months maximum, um, if they fought to the last. And yeah, it's been obviously almost three years now. Now this is because of US funding and it's not just money, it's obviously actual military equipment. <clears throat> so I know that people say that it's conspiracy theory that USA started this war, but I think in a realistic sense, um, even if you don't believe what I know to be true, um, you'd have to say that at the very minimum, USA are funding the war, and that if USA stopped funding the war, it would end. I mean, realistically, all that Trump has to do to end the war eventually is to stop funding it. Now, I know that if that happened, then there would be pe people in different parts of Europe who would pick up the slack. But the problem is that the United Kingdom will do whatever USA tells them to do. And if USA is not funding it, then U United Kingdom won't either. And that will make other European countries nervous about funding it. Now, some still might, but I think they would be nervous about it. And also, I, I'm pretty confident that Ukraine, if they're at all sensible, they will have been hoarding certain supplies and <clears throat> they could keep going for perhaps six months. But after six months, and they, and they will get increasingly desperate as things start to collapse, after six months, they will collapse. And um, <clears throat> so that's if, if Trump doesn't do anything. If, if all he does is just say no more funding. <clears throat> so that's that one option. It's not going to end in 24 hours if he does that. And I, and I think it'd be, I'd be surprised if Ukraine surrendered in, in 24 hours. Now, the other second option, of course, is that Trump um, does what some people think he'll do, which is hand Ukraine over to Russia. Now, literally, that would involve him meeting with Russia and obviously with the support of the American people and saying we will have USA actually join forces with Russia on their side against Ukraine. Now, were that to happen, obviously there would be a lot of people in Europe who would say, no, 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 we're not going to allow this. And it would start a World War III, I believe, because I think you'd find that the United Kingdom would declare war against USA in that circumstance. They wouldn't they wouldn't be in lockstep with them. And NATO would turn on on USA and you'd have USA, Russia and probably China as well as the three evils that we would all oppose. So again, I don't think that USA would allow that. I know that you say, well he's in the he's got power, he's in charge of the Senate and the House of Representatives and he can do what he's like, but I don't think his own party would allow that because it would be World War Three. I think that would be the scenario that would be the most likely to create that. Now, <clears throat> then, of course, we have the idea that he continues funding Ukraine. Um, I don't see that as being in line with his promise, but you never know. That could happen. Um, he could just say, hey, look, I'm going to fund you guys so much and actually give them enough, enough funds to win. And then say to Russia, look, they're going to win. Um, we're going to give them our entire military budget. 
If they're going to win, you guys better surrender. And of course, if they gave their entire military budget, then USA aren't being protected. And Russia could just attack a USA directly. Mm. Well, probably wouldn't, but, you know, they could, because that could be a ruse and so forth. But, you know, and, and of course, the other option is USA actually send forces in. I think it's far too late for USA to send forces in, but they could. And then we've got, of course, the option that, which I think will happen, which is that they'll have a vote. Now, there's been nothing said that that's what's going to happen. This is just my personal opinion. I think that they'll have a vote. So uh, we can go over fairly simply the other options. I don't think they're likely. But the vote option, I wanted to go over. And, and look, I know a lot of people got upset about that missile, and I know it could have been nuclear-tipped. It wasn't nuclear-tipped. As I said before, even if it was, I don't think the USA would retaliate. I think one single nuclear-tipped weapon fired into Ukraine would not lead to a World War III. I think that would be an escalation, but I don't think it would, particularly with Trump coming into power soon afterwards. Um, so I know that we could be worried about that. Um, and, and look, I think it is worrying, but I don't think that'll be the end of everything. So what I wanted to look at is what happens if Trump does do what I think he'll do and have that vote. So <clears throat> if we have that vote, I'm not actually seeing it happen in literally his first day. I think it'll happen after a little while. I think that the actions of Biden in approving long range missiles and the response by Russia are firing a long range missile into Ukraine suggests that it'll be something that Trump will have to do more quickly than perhaps he'd like. But I don't think it's yet at the stage where he has to do it on day one, literally day one of his taking office. So what I think will happen is that when he does it, he'll meet with them and he'll say, right, oh, you guys are going to have to have elections over the right to independence and self-determination of the Donbass region. Everything else is negotiable, but that's not negotiable. <clears throat> and there's going to be a ceasefire about that. And then I think that Ukraine will say, well, we want Crimea added as well. And we'll only agree to that if there's a chance that Crimea come back. I think Russia will say no to that. And then Russia will say, well, we also want all the land that we've captured to also be in this vote. And then, you know, there'll be a bit of back and forth. And I think in the end, you'll get quite a lot of oblasts, quite a lot of areas. Uh, they're like states. A blast is just their word for a state or, or a territory. And <clears throat> you'll have quite a lot of them that will be subject to a vote, and you, it might even include some parts of Russia. Then you'll have a vote, and they'll set that up. It'll take a long time. I think in the end you will have United Nations um, as a whole will oversee the vote, and it might even extend beyond the five members, or the five um, founding members. So... Uh, Russia, China, USA, UK and France will obviously be involved. But I think that you'll probably find that there'll be a number of other interested parties that will get involved and they will send supervisors over and comment on... Well, they won't just comment on how secure it is. They'll make sure it's secure. And this will take quite a while. I, I imagine it'll take six months. might take longer than that just for them to vote and to make sure that it's that it's fair. And that these, they'll probably have conditions such as these were citizens of the region before Russia's invasion and all that sort of thing. And there'll be all this ensuring that it's fair and so forth and so on and all that sort of thing. So in the end, I think that this vote will happen. Now, can I predict the end of the, the outcome of the result? I think I can, uh, based on the opinion polls in 2014 after the Euromaiden, and I think that that will find conclusively that Crimea will vote to officially cede and become part of Russia, and the Donbass will vote to officially cede, and now I think that they originally wanted to be independent, but I don't think the vote will have an independence option, because it won't be a three-way vote, so I think that they will opt to become part of Russia. Now, as for the other areas, um, there, are, there were votes in 2014, and I think that if we honoured those votes, 
um, and these protests and so forth in Odessa and another a number of other regions that actually haven't been captured by Russia would prefer to be part of Russia. And you'll find that um, we, we, a lot of people talk about it being eastern and western Ukraine, but it's not actually a straight line, it's more of a diagonal line that splits, it still splits Ukraine roughly in half, but it's um, eastern and southern Ukraine uh, versus northern and western Ukraine. So northern and western Ukraine will stay as Ukraine. Southern and eastern Ukraine will become part of Russia. And so obviously Kiev will stay as Ukraine, Lviv will stay as Ukraine, and there are all sorts of other parts that will stay as Ukraine. I don't see any parts of Russia voting to become part of Ukraine, if that is on the table. Now, when that happens, I think that you'll find that there will be a lot of protests. I don't think that every country will automatically recognise them. I think there'll be people who'll say, no, that wasn't a fair vote. Um, and <clears throat> I think you'll find that there'll still be fighting about it. There'll be, for example, Odessa. I say that Odessa wasn't even captured. Why are they going to Russia? And... Well, they're even in the mix, and so there'll be fighting, there'll be anger and all that sort of thing. So the idea that the war will just completely end probably will be false. There will be some fighting, there'll be some residual fighting. And even once they change hands and there'll probably be a, a people moving, um, either into other Abbas to avoid being a part of Russia and so forth, a bit like what happened in the partition between India and Pakistan, um, and, and people will be moving and and that kind of thing and there'll be there'll be resistance and there'll be there'll be unrest in these regions particularly if it was a close vote and they might actually say look it has to be a very one-sided vote it has to be an 80 percent to 20 percent sort of thing or something along those lines um <clears throat> and yeah otherwise they might have to have a second vote and so forth and yeah and say do you want to be independent instead and There'll be all that. But I think ultimately you'll find that a number of countries, it won't just be USA, Russia and Ukraine that'll approve it. They'll have to to start with, but you'll also find that the United Kingdom will approve this and you'll find a number of other countries will approve it at the time, especially if they manage to have their countries involved in overseeing the vote and making sure it was fair. Now, some that weren't involved will say no, they don't agree with it, and some will be neutral. A lot will be neutral. And as it progresses, I think that you'll find that those opinions will change and the majority of people will approve the vote, but some won't. Now, I also think that there will be a shake-up in Ukraine with their laws, um, particularly their Nazi laws that allow Nazism um, and allow it without, without restriction. Now, around the world, Different countries have different laws about it and some tolerate it to some extent, such as Malaysia and Thailand and Singapore. They tolerate it to some extent. There are obviously Nazi groups in, well, Germany still, Switzerland, Netherlands, it was even a group in Greece. And of course, USA get confused and they have Ku Klux Klan and Nazis, which are different groups, but they often get a bit confused and think they're the same group. So, and therefore they think that it, around the world they are the same group, but they're not, they're different groups. But anyway, um, so I think that you'll find that, that that resolution that Russia requested in 2012 to end Nazism will actually be approved and that, that Ukraine will be pressured to change their laws. Now, will Poland want their land back that they lost at the end of World War II, which People not aware of that. What happened was that um, early on in World War Two, Germany and USSR, which is now Russia, or essentially Russia, um, they were allies and they um, split Poland in half. And the German half <clears throat> became German Poland and the um, Soviet half became Soviet Poland. And at the end of that war, the German Poland part went back to Poland. But the Soviet Poland didn't, and it ended up becoming Ukraine. So the actual Ukraine is half as big as, well, it became twice as big because of that. And then, of course, it added Crimea later on from right at the end. And so 
Poland has legitimate claim to have Polish or, or Soviet Poland go back to Poland because they've won the war. And so it was a bit of an odd thing because obviously Germany betrayed Soviet Union and Soviet Union changed sides and all that. Um, and then they won the war. So, and in fact, Germany probably lost because they betrayed Soviet Union because the Soviet Union won. So, <clears throat> but that shouldn't have been a spoiler for having um, Poland. So, Poland, I think, would have a claim to that. And that, if they did take that, and if there was a vote first, then you'd find that Ukraine wouldn't be much left. Now, Kiev would exist still. And there would be a few other areas, but probably not that much. And so, would Poland do that? Well, Russia actually supports that happening. And I think it would strengthen their claims over the Ukrainian region that is not part of Polish um, Ukraine or what was at the time Soviet um, Poland. So Polish Ukraine could go back to Poland. And if that happened, I think you'd find that, yeah, there would be a lot of people pretty angry about it. But there'd also be a lot of people pretty happy about it. So I think that Polish Ukraine is a is a viable thing and I think that that could happen and then you'd be left with Ukraine as a very small area um, with not many people and of course Ukraine has always been very poor but I recognize this but under Polish rule the Polish Ukraine was quite wealthy so Poland could take care of that area better than Ukraine could take care of it and Russia could obviously take care of their part a lot better than Ukraine could by themselves. And I think that the bit that would be remain would be this relatively small slither of land and probably not that many people on it. It would probably still be called Ukraine, but there wouldn't be many people there. And I think that long term, I think the people would, would vote to be to become part of Russia or part of Poland. And that would be a future vote for that. Now, that might be 15, 20 years down the track, but I think that that would be the conclusion and Ukraine would cease to exist as a country, but the region would still be called Ukraine. It would still have that name, but it just wouldn't be self-governing. And you'd probably find that, I mean, I don't know what the borders will be, but I think somewhere close to half of it will be go back to Poland and it'd be the parts that were part of Poland originally, plus there'd be that vote. And then there'd be the parts that would go to Russia, plus there'd be a secondary vote. Um, so I, I expect that'll take around 20 to 30 years. Now, that's that side of things. That's the Ukraine side of things. Uh, what will happen as far as the whole nuclear thing and all that sort of stuff? So I see... USA under Trump has been less militaristic. The Department of Government Efficiency, or DOGE, seems to be aimed at ending expenditure, which surely a lot of that unnecessary expenditure is on military, which would weaken USA militarily. And a lot of people would not be happy with that, but that's what's likely to happen. And of course, Republicans have traditionally been pro-war and pro military so having republicans in power and being anti-military would be a bit confusing so it would then depend on who comes in after trump would it go back to i mean kamala harris is quite young she could go again would she go again i don't see hillary clinton going again but if kamala harris went again from the scratch and got the nomination and all that then you know that could happen um Joe Biden's obviously never going to go again. Hunter Biden has no chance of going with his image is tarnished. So would Hillary Clinton consider going? Probably not. But there might be someone else that might go. Um, and for the Republican side, because they've said, oh, Donald Trump Jr. will go, uh, would it be someone like Tulsi Gabbard, who's recently switched sides? Um, would she go? She might. Um, would she get... The popular vote, I think she's actually fairly popular. So that's something that, you know, they could be considered to have a, um, a Hawaiian woman 
be the first female president. And it could be Tulsi Gabbard versus Kamala Harris in the next election. Um, and I, I, I don't know who would win that one, but if it is Tulsi Gabbard, then I think that you'd find that she would be um, pushing for more honesty and more transparency in the military side of USA. And that would probably lead, lead to yeah, an ending of a lot of the secret military exercises. Um, I actually see Doge continuing for quite a long time. And I think it, 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 she would continue it. And, uh, you know, I, I see her, I mean, I don't know the opinion polls of Gabbard versus Harris, but I, I see that as going quite strong. I actually think that this presidency from the way that it started, will be quite strong. The last one was quite weak. He, he didn't get the House or the Senate and, and had the wrong picks for his cabinet. This time he's got the right picks. He's got loyal people. Uh, I see it as being a lot stronger, and I think that they will undo a lot of the restrictions and set it up for future Republican presidencies. So let's say that Tulsi Gabbard gets in for four years and then for another eight, eight years after that. Um, I, I see Kamala Harris perhaps going to the wayside a little bit. Um, and I don't know who another presidential candidate for the Democrats would be, but maybe someone would come up. Um, maybe that Waltz fella, Tim Waltz, was it? Maybe someone from the Republican side. Ron DeSantis, perhaps, might pop up. Um, there's a few different options. And I, I see... Yeah, I mean, we probably have Joe Biden and Donald Trump both dying um, by that period. So, you know, they'd be in their 90s. Pro probably looking at um, Biden would probably die first. And then perhaps Trump would die around about when Tulsi Gabbard finishes her eight years, assuming she gets in. Blah, blah, blah. Now, what's going to happen for everything else outside of USA? Um... I think that what you'll find is that during so this war will end, I think we'll find that a lot of wars will end under um, Trump's presidency. You'll find that they will, I, I think USA will end the financial support of Israel, or at least they'll put conditions on the financial support, and that in turn will end Israel's current conflict. Um, I don't think they'll like that, but that'll end it. And Israel, I think it'll continue as a, as a separate country, but I think that it will be a bit different. Um, <clears throat> so I don't see, I, I see that war, the current war ending. And I think that there'll be, he'll be moving towards an agreement with the Middle Eastern countries so that there's no future wars in that region, or less, certainly not this sort of, this sort of war and kidnapping of people and all that sort of stuff. You'd want to get some kind of an agreement between everyone that it works out for everyone. And I see that as the second stage of um, Trump's presidency. So what will happen with Russia? I think that Russia, they won't, I don't think they'll be tried with war crimes. Um, firstly, they they can veto them all in the United Nations. They're too powerful and so forth. I think that some people will try to pressure them, but ultimately I don't see that happening. Um, I think the World Health Organization will be disbanded and I think that NATO will be disbanded. And um, I think NATO will be replaced by a separate alliance that would start off being USA and UK and perhaps Australia. Um, we already have it as an AUKUS and I think that they'll add countries to that that are loyal rather than just a mutual thing. It'll be US focused and it'll be countries that are that are loyal to USA. And they might add Israel as a fourth member in New Zealand, perhaps if they agree to be more loyal than they are at the moment. Uh, maybe Canada. And then they'll just build up from there. So that'll replace NATO. NATO well but it, they might want to replace the European part with the European Union, make that military as well. Um, but it'll be different. So you'll actually probably find that USA will be in many ways opposed to the European Union 
and obviously Russia and China will have to work out whether they ally. Now, I think that you'll find probably after Trump's finished, and we have the Tulsi Gabbard t- um, stage, assuming that she runs and wins. A lot of people are saying that she will. Um, I think that you'll you'll find during that stage that that China and Russia will move towards either an alliance or a war. And I actually suspect that there will be a war between them. Now, the war will be uh, essentially an annexation war. And now you might think, well, that's annexations happen without a fight. But I think in this stage there will be a fight because Russia won't want to lose territory, but China will want to take it and China will want to move in and all that. And this will excite Americans because they'll go, oh, wow, we can... If those two wipe each other out, then that's great. And I think that Americans will probably be pressured to um, support the the little guy, that being Russia. And you'll find that USA will support Russia against China. Um, and I think that would be a mistake. I think USA should stay out of it, but I don't think they'll stay out of it. And I think that this will be the end of the Republican control of the presidency when that happens, because if Tulsi Gabbard does that, she's a fool. She should stay neutral, but she, I suspect, suspect that she will support them. And when she does, that that will end up being a bit of a ruse. And, well, it will be a real fight. I think that in the end, China and Russia will ally with each other. And they'll take all of USA's aids and, and kind of laugh at them. Then we'll probably have a Democrat president. Probably a good thing to have to swap between the different ones. Who that'll be? Maybe it'll be Kamala Harris. Um, maybe she will come back um, 12 years later and be the president. And so when that happens, I think you'll see that she'll be over uh, an America that's no longer the most powerful country in the world because China will be. And I think she will learn that lesson of staying neutral and will stay out of the conflict. And I think the next conflict there so after the russo or sino-russian whatever you want to call it right russian china war of annexation soon after that we'll find that um, north korea will invade south korea and with chinese backing and i think you'll find that japan will support south korea now usa will be tempted to support japan and south korea but i don't think they will because they'll have learned that lesson about supporting Russia against China, so they'll just stay out of it. They'll say, no, you guys clean up your own problems. And now I don't see that that war as being quick, but I think that eventually um, China will win because they are more powerful. And I, I see that as happening, that taking about six or eight years, and that will probably dominate Kamala Harris's presidency. And eventually South Korea will fall, and then Japan will fight a bit longer, and then Japan will fall. And then Taiwan will fall. And I think at that point, Kamala Harris will, she'll, she'll do eight years. And then, so we're 20 years in the future now. And they will just, yeah, they will, they will fall under Chinese control. And of course, traditionally, China did hold Japan and Korea for thousands of years. So, you know, they, they were part of their country. So a lot of Japanese people will move to America, a lot of Koreans will move to America, a lot of Taiwanese will move to America. And there will be that that stage where USA will be thinking, well, we're staying out of it, but we're also defending our lands. So then I expect we'll go back to a Republican president, whoever that might be. Um, I mean, maybe it will be Donald Trump Jr. Who knows? It could be Eric Trump. I, I don't know. It could be Baron Trump. It could be Ivana Trump. It could be whoever. Now, whoever that is, I think that they'll oversee a period where USA say, okay, look, we're worried about this. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, annex Canada and Mexico to secure our borders. And so, and then build a, a big defensive position around the Alaskan border with Russia, because that's quite a, that's, that's how Russia is probably going to come in. So now Canada probably I don't think I don't see either Canada or Mexico fighting, but they might object. But then they'll tell everybody, "Oh no, we love being part of America." And then it'll, 
will it still be called USA or will it just call itself America? So, it might just call itself America and change its name slightly because <coughs> it's North America. Mexico is actually North America. A lot of people think that's South America or Central America, but it's still North America. So, you'll find that that will become one country. Now, there might be some division about all of that, but they'll do that. They have more land. There's a lot of spare land in Canada and people will be spread out and that will be a defensive thing. They will not be attacking anyone outside of their own little sphere of influence. Now, in response to that, I think that China and Russia will become one country at, in, after that. And so we're talking 20, 25 years in the future. Um, they'll become one country and the Russian ambitions, of course, was, would be to take back the land that was previously a part of the Soviet Union or the Warsaw Pact even. But I think China will say, hey, we'll give that to you if you help us to take over the rest of Asia. And I think America will stay out of it. Hawaii, I think, will fall to China. Um, and I think America will let that happen. I don't see them as seeing that as an act of war. They'll just let it let little Hawaii go that way. Now, then we'll probably find that most of Asia will fall to the new China or the new China-Russia, um, except India. I think India has enough to want to remain neutral and they'll, they'll form an alliance with them. So once that happens, I think that you'll find that all of Asia will fall. Most of the countries are pretty small and I don't see them fighting very much. Australia certainly won't. Um, I think they'll go all the way to Australia. They have expressed an interest in Australia. Um, so this is about 30 years down the track, about the point where Poland's taken back Ukraine and, and Russia's got the other part of Ukraine and the little bit that's left is that Ukraine doesn't exist anymore. Now, at that point, then I think you'll find that, so we're 30 years in the future now, so we're 20, 2055, round about. And now we're, we're looking at do USA want to control South America as well? And the simple answer is probably they do. And so I think that you'll find that there will be a war. Firstly, for Central America, and I don't think that'll take very long, but then for South America. And how difficult that is depends on if they all unite in one country. Um, or if they don't, or at least two countries. So Brazil, of course, is the Portuguese South America, but will the Spanish South America all unite in one country? If they do, particularly if both Portuguese and Spanish South America fight together, <clears throat> that could be a very difficult war for USA to win, even once they control Central America, and that could take quite a lot of effort, and they might abandon it and just be happy with the North America part. But... If they don't ally with each other, I think that South America could easily fall and could it would be a, a war. It wouldn't be an, a straight up annexation, but I see them as becoming part of America and make it one big America. Now, as far as a defensive alliance, having one big America would be powerful enough to scare even China and Russia as a com combined entity to scare them off. Now, again, I'm seeing India being neutral, but then I think that what will happen then is that after that happens, then the China-Russia group will want to take Europe. And they'll start by taking what Russia wants as the former Soviet Union, and I think those countries will fall pretty quickly. And then they'll want to take the former Warsaw Pact countries, including Poland, and I think they'll fall fairly quickly too. So Ukraine will be united again, but under Russia and China. So India will still be neutral and you still got most of Europe being free and of course Africa being free. Now what, what would probably happen at that point is that USA would stop their funding of um, Israel because there's no point there. They can't possibly hope to help them and they're more worried about defence. And at that point I think that you'll find that the Middle East will all they'll destroy Israel and Israelis will flee back to USA perhaps if they can and that's about it and then if, and then I see that Africa will actually 
Seaboard South America did, and they'll want to unite under one banner too, but they won't, won't be sure which banner. A few different options. I actually think that the Moors, also known as Berbers, will end up dominating. It will take some time, um, but I think that they will, and then I think they will attack Europe now. So you've at this stage got effectively four blocks. You'd have the African block, the European block, the Russian China's block, and the America block. Is it five? Africa, Europe, China, America, oh, and then India. Little India by itself. Now, that's five blocks. So India by itself, maybe maybe India will combine with Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and maybe even invade them all just to make sure that they have a bit of territory. Maybe the Indians will go back the old Aryans and say, look, we used to control all of Europe and almost the Europe and, and parts of Asia, and we want that land. Then they might call themselves Aria, and then they'd be a fifth block. A fourth block, though, because there wouldn't be much of Europe left. And then the Africans will take the land that, of Europe that used to belong to them, which is Spanish, Spain and Portugal, and then we're down a fourth. Now, who's going to win from that point? So we have a situation where China and Russia would control around about half the world, but they wouldn't be able to defeat USA, or as it would now be called, America. Um, they could probably defeat India, but they've signed an aggression pact, and they could probably defeat the African alliance. Although I think that you'll find that they will not want to, as their focus will, they will want to take America, but they have these other two alliances that will be stopping them. And do they want to fight with them? And I think you'll probably find that that'll be it. That'll be the end of it. And that'll be the end of all of that. Now, that could take 100 years. And, yeah, so we, we would be left with... I, I, I don't think they'd be called India anymore. I think it'd be called Aria. You'd have Aria, America. Now, what would China and Russia call themselves as a combine? Would China let them keep their name and call it Rus? Would China call themselves the central land? Like they traditionally did. Zhongkang. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that land would be called. And I, I think that you'd find that there would be internal divisions because Russia would want to go back to being Russia. And China wouldn't want them to. So I think that that will eventually collapse in on itself and there would be that civil war the russians would still stay strong and then that'd be split in two and then when that happens the indian alliance or perhaps they'd be called aria by then they would perhaps go and, and take advantage of it and americans would still stay by themselves so that's what a pro russian that's what a trump presidency in the end of this war will mean 100 years down the track it'll mean yeah China would take everywhere, but that'd be good for America. Now we would be end up, we would end up with five countries essentially after a while. I don't see it as being a quick war. This is this is a slow, gradual thing. Um, parts of it will be quick. You know. I mean, what what would the New Africa be called? Would it be called Barbary? Would it be called something else? I, I don't know. And you know, so this is a future that I see as quite plausible. Um, in some parts of it are almost inevitable. But now what's the alternative if Trump doesn't do what he said he'd do? I mean, there are the other options. There's the option where he, he hands Ukraine over to Russia, in which case America becomes the bad guys along with Russia and China, and we get an actual world war, we would get a direct war, proper war, not just lots of fighting for 100 years, but proper direct world war. And I think in that case, we're going to have pretty big problems. Um, I think it'd be Europe against those three, and you'd probably find the rest of the world would go up against those three, or most of the rest of the world. Um, but <clears throat> who would win? I think you might find a bit of a changing of sides. Americans might 
vote for someone else and then they'd change sides and then they'd win. So maybe that's a good thing for America, but I don't know. It's That's probably going to be a lot of deaths, a lot of some big problems. Um, also, of course, if Trump doesn't end the the war, I mean, how long will they wait before they throw their nukes and... It's it's an uncomfortable feeling. It's the worst scenario. Well, at least Trump won, that, so that's better than Trump losing. I think Trump losing would have been the worst scenario. Well, Trump losing and then not ending the war and then escalating it would have been the worst scenario. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe Kamala Harris would have ended the war too. But, yeah, it's, it's a worrying thing. And I, I I don't think the world will be conflict-free anytime soon. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think that we're not going to be annihilated as a human species quite yet. Anyway, that's it for me. Bye-bye now.